Well said, me too. I can't wait to see it. I think uh, Vice has had a lot of hits over there, and uh, I'm interested to see what's next. Uh, we should also talk about what's next for The Rock here. The Unforgiven pay per view goes down on September 26th, then Rock finds himself in a six pack challenge for the vacant world title. Uh, I guess Vince had beaten Triple H for the belt, silly as that sounds, but then he forfeited it. So Austin is going to be the ref for this match. And unfortunately, if Silva can throw that graphic back up there. This is going to be really the last major moment for the British Bulldog. Left to right, if you're seeing mm-hmm. the graphic over at grillingjr.com, you've got the monster Kane, who's only debuted a couple of years prior to this. Uh, the big show, who's been with us less than a year at this point, the returning Bulldog after uh, a regrettable experience with WCW. Mankind, The Rock, and Triple H. All-star team, man. The big match. And Stone Cold is the referee. Triple H wins the six-pack match. They go 20 minutes and 28 seconds. And Meltzer would report at one point there was a plan for Rock to beat Triple H for the title the very next night on Greensboro. But allegedly, according to Meltzer, Triple H complained loudly And the idea was next. And I think this is when we started to hear more and more rumblings in the torch and the observer about triple H, the politician, how did that affect the rock? Like did that, do you remember that happening a, and then B does that just add fuel to the fire to their professional rivalry? Pardon me. I think it did. Uh, a, a lesser first guy. Uh, less comfortable with the, his aptitude and his knowledge of the business, I think it would have affected them a lot more than it did. Uh, Rock knew the wrestling business wasn't always clean. There was always going to be guys because, look, you're getting paid on discretionary income. There's a lot of politicians involved. Uh, that's just the way that it is. And quite frankly, Conrad, this is not a new development. I, I saw the same pol- uh, politics. In 1974, when I got in the business, guys are always jockeying for a better spot. Uh, and, uh, that doesn't exclude anybody on the roster. The good thing we had back in those days was we had a booker who was wise, very wise of the world and cowboy. It'd been there. It done that. So, uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's just a, I don't know. I, I, I didn't have a problem. I really did. It, it seemed like the ratings are decent. Uh, rock was happy seemingly. And it was inevitable that triple H is going to get the, uh, going to get the crown at some point in time. He had Vince's ear. He's a tremendous talent. Uh, he didn't get something gifted to him that he didn't deserve or couldn't handle. So, uh, I, 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 I liked the triple H getting a, a, the push up. We needed him to push up. We needed that great wrestling heel. He reminded me, Triple H has always reminded me, and it, and it really did the other day when I was watching the Harley race, uh, dark side. Triple H has taken so much psychologically from Harley. Yes. I think Har- Harley was one of his favorite wrestlers as a kid growing up. And why not? I mean, God damn man. Harley race. Are you kidding? He was, he was just simply amazing. So. Uh, I, 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 I liked what we were doing in that regard. I mean, triple H deserved to be the champion and having a, a, a wrestling heel champion. It, it, I thought was a good thing. I, um, I can't argue that I liked his presentation as a heel champion, but I was a much bigger fan of the rock here. So yeah, that's but, not in the cards. Most, fi- most people work on him. Yeah. You're right. You're out on the money. Most people were, uh, uh, most people were, and that should have come as no surprise. Rock and mankind are going to win the tag titles for the third and final time, beating the new age outlaws on October 12th on SmackDown. They're going to lose them just a few days later on the 18th to the Hollies. So a total of three very brief title runs for the rock and sock connection. But now with tag team wrestling in the rearview mirror. The rock is put into the world title picture. 
He's scheduled to wrestle the world champion Triple H and Steve Austin in a triple threat match at Survivor Series for the title. But as we know, Austin winds up getting hit by a car during the show, and that takes him out of the match and actually out of action until October of the following year. He's out with neck surgery. So Big Show is put into Austin's place in the match, and it's been discussed for a long time. Why was Big Show the right guy here? Because he's seven feet tall and weighed 300 plus pounds. Vince loved go. the size. Uh, I thought all along that we had kind of mismanaged Big Show. Uh, I, I, I thought we overexposed him. He was an Andre the Giant like commodity that should have been seen less to mean more. Mm. But we uh, uh, we just went whole hog on that deal, man. Uh, and I thought we overexposed the, the attraction. You didn't see Andre getting overexposed and that's how a big show should have been booked, but he wasn't. Well, we know what's next for the rock is, um, he's going to be at the Armageddon pay-per-view it's December 12th, the rock and sock team reunites to, uh, to challenge the new age outlaws. They're going to pick the win up. It's a, it's a weak finish that goes 16 minutes and 28 seconds, according to the observer. And to finish the year, the rock and mankind are forced into what they're calling a pink slip on a pole match where the loser is going to get a pink slip and be fired by this new McMahon Helmsley regime, which we know of course is going to set up the year 2000 for the rock. But that is an interesting way to, to finish the year here. I mean, we start with these guys being bitter rivals. And the title switch with mankind and the rock and then all the craziness of the Royal rumble and halftime heat and rock and sock and rock. This is your life. And now we finish with a pink slip on a pole match. The rocks, 1999 was incredible. And it included a WrestleMania main event with stone cold, but at least in my mind, the rocks 99 is really synonymous with Mick Foley more than anybody else. Yeah. Well, they, they were married together. They dated, they went steady and, uh, it worked. They, the, those two guys just had great, a great, uh, creative symmetry with each other. And, uh, it, it just seemed like everything always fit better than most people thought it might. And that's a credit to Mick as well. Uh, I think. He was just, he was always there. He was always consistent. You could depend on him. He was reliable. And you guys know what I think about reliability as a, as a trait for pro wrestlers. It's the number one thing, man, reliability. And Mick was always reliable and worked his ass off. And he made things different, even though he it stayed in the same sphere. He still had, uh, he still fit. He knew how to fit in. He knew what to take, take take out with his matches, what to add to his matches. And he was so unique that, uh, it just kept working. 